Hi, good morning and good evening to everyone. Welcome to Mainframe Tutorial by Kumar. So, in this video, I would like to share about the CICS and the mainframe environment. So, let's go ahead and start with this introduction to the CICS. What exactly the CICS stands for? CICS stands for Customer Information Control System. The word itself says like the customer information control system so so far we have seen a batch environment now we would be en entering into then online environment when I say a batch all the processing happens at the background where the set of jobs are executed on a certain period of time so coming to the online everything will be alive so where you have you will be provided with a certain set of screens where you would be entering the data and you would be getting the results at the same time at the same instances of time whereas batch it runs for a certain period of time and it gets the results so online is pretty faster than compared to the batch so most of the banking systems insurance systems railway reservation systems they use these online screens for their processing for example most of the railway reservation systems are using this online system to give a tickets or to issue a tickets to the customer so you can understand how much powerful this online is so any mainframe so let's give a short introduction back to the mainframe world so any mainframe application is mainly divided into batch and online so multiple batch environments and multiple online environments can be created for different modules and large size applications when I say large size application it's banking insurance railways airways and so on so mainframe is a big world big data so mainframe is a combination of job and transactions when I say job it's a batch programs when I say transactions it's an online programs so online system typically consists of transactions now we would be when I go to further videos I would talk in terms of transaction when I was discussing about the job in JCL in JCL I was using continuously term as a job 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 so and CICS mostly we would be hearing about the word called transactions transactions so online system typically consists of transactions transaction is a logical unit of work that is inserting employee details updating employee details deleting employee details it's a simple basic I give a basic example so in the same way in coming to the real time inserting if you take the if you take the railway reservation system they will be selecting the station timing and uh, reserving the uh, customer name and uh, age gender and so and so so they would be entering those details and the provided online screen and they would issue a ticket and those ticket is printed and given to the customer the another big example is ATM so when you go to the ATM the backend screens will be of online but front end you can see a some dot net or Java Java screens over there so but back in there is a batch of but there is an online system running at the back end so which is connected to the front end designing so what you do what you do when you go to the ATM so just you insert your machine I mean your 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 card and you enter your details and do you do some transaction at the same time and the backend online system tracks everything and updates the database and give back you the results suppose you have a drawn thousand rupees so you have or a thousand dollars so then after debiting and everything so you, you you would be getting a mini statement over there so this is all printed over there so why I'm saying all these stories so you would be going to see what all happens internally screen reporting 
structure so so you will be going to see soon what exactly those are why how important the, the screen is and how important the processing is how quickly you will be getting in the results so you can see after the uh, after the transaction is completed you will be receiving an sms to your mobile you will be receiving a hard copy from the output of the atm so on the same way there are many of the databases which gets updated on the back end so it's a simple online system so we have talked about examples of railway reservation system and the main and the atm system for a simple online system so i was telling about the transaction transactions are of two types one is user defined transaction and a system defined transaction either a user defined or system defined transactions form between 1 to 4 alpha numeric characters this is very very important so it might be a either system defined or a user defined the transaction id should be 1 to 4 alpha numeric character so most of them use 4 bytes 4 bytes alpha numeric code so i use 4 bytes user user defined transactions are defined based on end user need so when we develop any application online application based on the user need we give a transaction to them so the transactions are initiated so system defined transactions are supplied by online for common repeated task within an online environment for examples of user defined transactions are tr01 tr02 tr03 and so on so the same way the system defined transactions examples are cent cedda cedf ceci cebr cesn cesf and cssn so these are the various system defined transactions which we use in our programming so note the very important entire mail frame application consists of jobs and transactions this is very 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 important so now i would tell i am coming into the exact things which is very very much interesting so multitask online is a multitask environment where multiple programs can be executed by mul multiple user concurrently that is resources are allocated to different programs simultaneously i repeat it again online is a multitask environment where multiple uh, programs can be executed by multiple concurrently that is the resources are allocated to different programs simultaneously multithreading if same program being executed by multiple users concurrently it's called multithreading for example i can say you like atm atm is the best example in atm we have certain set of programs one program is billing program one another program is inserting a machine and connecting to the particular program when i insert a machine i mean sorry when i insert a card the first step of the program is to validate the username validate the username i mean or validate the debit card number or the credit card number if it is existing or not that is a first program and another program is if the user id is existed then enter the password so that is another program if password is corrected then enter the amount need to be withdrawn so there are three kinds of programs over here so what there are multiple atms located at different centers okay so multiple users want to insert their debit card wanted to check their balance and everything so there we have set a set of programs those programs are executed by multiple users concurrently is called multi threading it's so simple in multi threading environment multiple copies of same programs will be created as number of users requesting task 
Multi-threading is a subset of multitasking. Multitasking, it's very important. One line is a multitask environment where multiple programs can be executed by multiple users concurrently. That is, the resources are allocated at to different programs simultaneously. That's the reason I say multi-threading is a subset of multitasking. Yay! Now we are in entering into the actual definite actual thing here. Screen, 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 screen. CSS is full of screens. S I like this very much. I really love online programming. Screen. Online users will interact with the online system with the help of screens. Yes, obviously, without a screen, you cannot enter into the online environment. You will be giving self system defined transaction ID first in order to enter into the online screen. Then you will be given with a, 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 a screen, so where you will be entering the data. Railway reservation systems. For a railway reservation system, they, they are provided with a transaction ID. So once they enter the transaction ID, their uh, their system screen will be provided where they can enter the customer information and submit a ticket and sub give it to the customer. So in order to develop that screen, develop the driveway reservation screen or the ATM screen, what we need to do? Screen is developed. How is it is developed? Screen is developed with a map set. Map set is a collection of maps. Individual blocks in a screen are called as maps. So how is this map defined? Map is defined or is a collection of fields. So in order to develop map set, maps, fields, we need to have certain programming that is called BMS. We call it as BMS. BMS concept is used. So BMS, what exactly the BMS? BFS stands for basic map support. It is also called as assembler macros. These are called as assembler macros. Defi to define a map set, DFHMSD macro is used. So in order to develop a screen or in order to develop a map, so you need to have an assembler macro. So there are certain defined, there are certain macros defined here. So in order to, in order to work with map set or map or fields, each map set is also to be the certain type of macros. So you, you need to use of those. So define a map set, DFHMSD macro is used. In the same way, to, de de to define a map, DFHMDI macro is used. In the same way, to de define a field, DFHMDF macro is used. Map set is identified by map set name, map is identified by map name, and field is identified by field name. As usual, there will be a rules for any programming or anything you do. Map set name, map name, field name, or user defined name, and must be followed, and must be formed between one to eight alphanumeric characters with to give more meaningful name. Any program must be coded in PDS member. In the same way, for assembler or BMS macro program, a separate PDS member is created where you code a program in order to create enter the map set map and the fields names so i will be giving a inter, give uh, tell you about the hierarchy of a screen how the screen is developed so screen sc screen will point to the map set map set is pointed to the maps and the maps to the fields so map set is map set has a macro called dfhmsd map set name map DFHMDI map name, fields DFHMDI field name. So in fields, the interesting is we have text fields and we have a, a variable fields. Text field is static, the data won't change. For example, in a screen, enter your name, give you give you a, enter your name, then you have a spaces over there or you have a blank area where you will be entering. Enter your name is the hard coded text that is called as text field variable field these are enterable fields and non enterable fields some are protected and enterable fields are unprotected so these are like uh, entering the data into the screen so that was about the introduction to the cics and uh, 
this was all introduction so that with this introduction i hope you can start working on cics i would be coming up with the more and more videos about the cics and my in my next video i would like to share about now we came to know about the what is map set what is map and fields so now in my next video i would like to share about how to develop map by using this assembler macros and what are the syntaxes we need to follow while creating a map i hope you ha you all have enjoyed with this vi this video thank you for watching this video if you like this video please feel free to subscribe or like or share it thank you everyone have a great and wonderful day